What is up everybody? This is Michael Filesage checking in here today. And today I wanted to make another video about uh, sclerotia, aka truffles or stones. And the reason that I wanted to do this is because I wanted to get more into, because I've talked about these species that have the capacity to produce, you know, sclerotia, right? You know, the Mexican and the Floridian grass lovers base, basically. But I've always focused also on the fruiting aspect. Now I'm making this video about for those who just want to get the truffles in the most efficient and effective way and produce the most truffles that they can. So this is what that video is for because there are some differences in the techniques that I've been discussing. So, okay, so let's get into this video. So the first thing that I want to talk about is uh, sclerotia. By the way, if you guys don't know what a sclerotia or what, what these truffles are, check out my video called All About Truffles. I will link it in the description, okay? So this is for those who've already watched that, who already understand the basics. So now I'm gonna talk about basically uh, in vitro. So in vitro means basically inside, uh, for example, like in a, in a sterile environment like this jar, right? Basically you don't take it out. You don't spawn it to bulk or anything like that. And this can be done in jars or bags mainly. So these are examples of in vitro kind of truffle grows. Uh, two different genetics, so as you can see, different phenotypes. Look at all that truffle on the bottom. Versus this guy who has all sorts of uh, truffles coming out here and there. Uh, smaller truffles, not much on the bottom. Lots of metabolites producing. Kind of starting to look iffy, maybe bacterial. This guy looks pretty healthy though. But it's fairly normal for them to produce lots of metabolites. But anyways, so jars and bags. So all you have to do is basically just take regular old grain substrate. It could be any grains, you know, that you use for core lovers. It doesn't really matter. You could... um you know, sometimes uh, some people, for example, Roger Rabbit started this. He would put, he would soak his grains inside co half coffee water and half regular water. Uh, so 50-50 mix. And he said that this helps uh, produce truffles more. So uh, I used to do that, but nowadays I just don't bother because mostly I'm not going for truffles. And, you know, I think there needs to, it needs to be reassessed really because there's no like real hard evidence that, that actually really does do much. Uh, it's we're ju we've just been going on his word for a couple of uh, decades. So yeah, no no real tests have been done. So if anybody wants to do that, then go for it. Uh, so anyways, back to the point. So let's talk about propagation, right? So basically you just need to inoculate it with an agar wedge and that's all you gotta do, right? To produce truffles. And you should wait at least a month and a half you know, after inoculation before harvesting minimum. You should probably wait like two months probably because you got to put in the colonization time as well. And if you shake up the jar, then they will colonize faster, but the truffle production will be delayed. If you just don't shake it up and you just leave the wedge in there, for example, if you're going by agar, you just leave the wedge in there and let it slowly colonize, it'll start producing truffles usually around the two week point. Every time you break it up, then it has to restart the whole process of the truffle production. So if you are spawning it to bulk, basically, then you could, you know, it's fine it doesn't matter because you're not looking for truffles because probably you're looking for fruits but if you want to just do it for truffles there's really no point to shake it up uh, maybe shake it up once you know either way it doesn't matter they'll produce truffles either way so propagation wise if you want to keep you know a lot of jars going of truffles then all you got to do is just do grain to grain transfers even let's say that you already have truffles produced in your master grain jar right that's fine, you just shake it up and then you just, the truffles will go into the new ones. You know, the truffles will also put out mycelium and help you out and they'll get bigger over time, hopefully. So yeah, basically don't worry about that, whether there's truffles in there or not. There's no like specific time limit or anything like that. By the way, you could keep truffles in jars like this for over a year, no problem. You know, it's it, after a certain point, they stop getting bigger. They just, the taste starts to get stronger. Yeah, and just to add, you know, that's one of the best parts about truffles is that if you have a lot of jars going, right? And let's say that you don't want to eat truffles like every week or something, you know, it's for like a special banquet meal or something like that, you know, your special reserve. You could, it's like wine, right? It's like vintage wine. You just got to leave it somewhere and just let it age and it gets better and better with age. Right? You don't have to spot it or anything. And every time you feel like cracking open, open a bottle and enjoying it with your friends, you can do that and you're gonna have fresh truffles. How cool is that? You don't have to dry it or anything. You could have fresh truffles. And let's say you open it up and you got some leftovers. You can leave them in the fridge. You know, I mean, maybe like two months even. Uh, even though I personally wouldn't go there, but you probably could. I usually like to do it within maybe like a couple of weeks. Um, and the difference with truffles is that I find that for storage, they're okay when with like sealing it like or like putting inside a Tupperware and closing the lid. I find it, it doesn't sort of start to decompose sort of like uh, fruiting bodies. So that part is nice as well. So yeah, there's also that aspect. 
Okay, guys, so let's go to the bulk. All right, so let's talk about it. So we're going to talk about substrate types that you should use if you just want truffles, not fruits, right? Remember, this is just if you want, just focused solely on truffles because, again, the methods are different and the rules are a little bit different. Uh, spawning methods, harvesting methods, and tips and tricks, general tips and tricks. I'll just put it in here, put it in there, you know, here and there. So substrate types, let's talk. They like poo. Yeah, absolutely. They like, you know, compost. Uh, they like nutritious substrates. Absolutely. But do you want that for truffle production? No, you don't want that for pro truffle production because they will keep tr producing truffles for a long, long time, right? So if you just want truffles out of this, then just use core or core and vermiculite, maybe add gypsum, but I just use core. Just for straight truffles, just core. Obviously, no casing layer because you're not trying to fruit these things, right? Just core. And the reason for that is because as long as your spawn is clean, the core will not contam until really there's just no energy left in the grains, right? To fight off contamination. And that could be months and months and months if you do it right. Okay, so for just for truffle production, just core. Pretty simple, just core. That, that's what I would recommend. And also vermiculite is also a pain in the butt to clean off of the truffles as well. So, you know, it's not only poo that you got to worry about cleaning off. And it's not just the cleaning off part of poo, because obviously you don't want to eat truffles from poo. But poo is nutritious, so it will contaminate at one point or another, right? And you can not keep it going for months then. That's why I recommend core, because it'll just keep going as long as your spawn is clean, as I said. All right, so let's talk about spawning methods. We we're going back earlier to what I was talking about, you know, like doing grain to grain transfers when you already have truffles. It's fine, right? Same thing when spawning to bulk. Okay, so let's say you have a jar of truffles, right? Basically, first of all, you could spawn to bulk anytime. Let's say this is a one and a half year old jar and now you want to spawn it to bulk. No problem. You can do that. If it's a one month old jar, you could do that. As long as it's fully colonized, you could do that. No problem, right? So basically, you could spawn it with the truffles that are already produced into the bulk. Right? When you spawn it, you could do that. Or you could harvest all the truffles in the jar right now and then take all the leftover grain and then put it to bulk. You could also do that too. Either one's fine. And you know what? Once you harvest all the truffles in here and you put the grains in there, then after a couple of weeks, the grains will be producing lots and lots of truffles and they'll keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I forgot to mention, why would you even want to spawn it to bulk when this already produces truffles and you're not interested in fruits? So why would you put it inside a bulk substrate? Well, because the truffles get bigger and bigger and bigger inside a bulk substrate. Basically, you're going to get bigger truffle. You could get, you know, golf ball sized truffle. You could get tennis ball sized truffles even. So that's why you're going to basically get bigger fruits. Uh, sorry, bigger truffles, bigger sclerotia, right? Again, this is completely sufficient as well. So, all right, so let's talk about harvesting, right? Let's say you kept, you spawned your truffles to bulk and it's been a few weeks and you're already noticing a lot of truffles, you know, coming up through the through the top, like here, you know, as you can see how, see how the substrate's all ripped apart and stuff. Those are truffles, right? And the thing is, I wanted to fruit these guys. So what you see on top is potting is basically a jiffy mix. And that is for the casing. And that's nutritious. So this is why you don't want to do that. Okay, you don't want to do that if you just want to get truffles because jiffy mix is slightly nutritious and it will contaminate at a certain point. Guaranteed. So... That's why you don't, that's why I say nothing nutritious if you want to do it just for truffles because you want to keep it going for months and months at a time, right? So basically, so let's uh, back to the point. So let's say that you got a bunch of truffles, right? And now you want to harvest them. All you got to do is you just got to rip your substrate apart, you know, go digging and pick up your truffles, all your truffles, right? And now you're just left with a, like a mass of, you know, substrate and grain just all mixed up and jumbled up, all looking chaotic, right? Uh, what do you do at that point? Well, then you could, you know, put it back together, you know, shape it right. And you, you could put the lid back on and wait a couple more months and you're going to get more truffles. That's right. You're going to get more truffles. So you could do that a few times as much as you want, basically, until they basically just run out of energy and stop producing truffles or contaminate. But that'll take a long time because, guys, there is so much energy in, in a microcord of grains. It's insane. If you have genetics that can make use of all of that, you'll be amazed by how much fungal matter it will produce. So that's basically, uh, yeah, that's the bulk thing. You know, just mist it every once in a while just to make sure that there's enough moisture in there. Even though truffles do tend to like less moist environments. So back to the casing layer, right? The reason that I am not mixing this up and harvesting all the massive truffles in there right now. I want to show you guys the bottom of this, but I don't, I'm kind of worried. Maybe I could do it. These are all truffles, guys. 
See all that metabolites? They're just huge truffles, just, you know, it's massive, right? So basically, um, the reason I'm not harvesting them right now is simply because they have a casing layer. And if I just, you know, mix it all up, then the casing layer is gonna get mixed into the substrate and anyways, it's gonna eventually contaminate. So I just wanna let this ride out and do its thing until it contaminates. And once it starts getting trick or probably trick, right? Then I'm gonna, I'm just gonna harvest the truffles. So that's basically what I'm gonna do, guys. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment, leave a like, really helps out this channel, guys. It helps truffle production, guys. Every like and comment will help me produce more truffles, guys. So thank you very much, guys. Michael File Sage, checking out. Bye-bye.